Light reaches the Earth after passing through the atmosphere at an incredible speed of 300,000 kilometers a second. It strikes material things and splits up into the wavelengths that produce colors. In this way, bodies reflect their colors. The molecules that produce this reflection are pigments. For example, the color of a green apple is related to the pigment molecules that constitute the apple. Only green is reflected from among the rays that strike these pigments, since the pigments absorb the other colors. Since the green light is reflected, we see the apple as green. After this stage, the rays reflected by objects must reach our eyes in order to be perceived as color. The light rays that reach the eye must first pass through the cornea, then the pupil and the lens to arrive at the retina. The perception of color begins in the cone cells in the retina. There is a group of three main cone cells that react to particular shades of light. These are classed as the blue, green and red cone cells. The cone cells convert these bits of color information into nerve impulses through the pigments they contain. Next, nerve cells connected to these cone cells transmit these nerve impulses to a specific area in the brain. The place where the colorful world we view all our lives is formed is this area in the brain. Just a few cubic centimeters in size. The brain is a piece of flesh, and it is dark inside. In this lightless brain of ours, nerve impulses from objects are deciphered, and the colors and all other qualities of the object are formed as a perception. Scientists who work on color still do not know the answer to the question of how nerve impulses are transmitted to the brain via the optic nerves, nor what kind of physiological effects they have on the brain. All they know is that the perception of color occurs in the center of vision in our brains. However, the brain continues to function as perfectly today as it has since human beings were first created. It is because of Allah's flawless creation that human beings live in a three-dimensional world whose colors, shapes, sounds, smells, and tastes are perceived inside a piece of flesh, a kilogram in weight, protected inside a dark skull. Now, let's consider once more what is needed for us to see colors. The sun emits rays to form a colorful world. The atmosphere allows only those rays to pass that are necessary to sustain life. Objects reflect the sun's rays according to a definite plan in such a way as to produce color. The eye converts the rays reaching it into nerve impulses. These nerve impulses are sent to a dark area of the brain. And at every moment inside this dark piece of flesh, we see a world of color. Every individual finds this incomparable miracle of creation ready at the time of his birth. There is no human participation in the production or continuation of the stages we have listed. It is Allah who has created all the colors of the world and placed human beings to live in this colorful world. In a verse in the Quran, Allah reveals this truth. Do you not see that Allah sends down water from the sky and by it we bring forth fruits of varying colors? 
and in the mountains there are streaks of white and red, of varying shades, and rocks of deep jet black. And mankind and beasts and livestock are likewise of varying colors. Only those of his servants with knowledge have fear of Allah. Allah is almighty, ever forgiving. Light, a blessing that brings color to our world, is not only important for human life. At the same time, it is very important for the lives of other living things in the world. Creatures have a language of color that operates according to their light sensing systems. Most living things need color to help them find food. For example, sunbirds. This species of bird feeds on the nectar of this shiny red flower. The flower's bright color allows the birds to find food easily. Some creatures possess camouflage resembling the colors and shapes of their environment. This allows them to hide from their enemies. This insect is the same color and design as the tree it is climbing. The squid can change its color at an instant to match the color of the area it is in. This bird's eggs and the color of the newly born chicks are the same as that of the surrounding area. All these are proof of a specially created defense tactic. If this creature on the leaf did not move, you would not know that it was an insect. You would think that it was a piece of dry branch. Some creatures use their colors and designs to warn their enemies and keep them at a distance. For example, this butterfly opens its wings wide and shows its enemy spots that resemble the eyes of an owl. In this way, it scares off its predators. Zebras use their striped design to confuse their enemies. Each one's stripes are different to those of all the others. They stand together and confuse the predators by mixing their stripes together. Polar birds assume a snow-white color in winter, whereas when spring comes, they change color to resemble that of the leaves and plants. These creatures are quite unaware of the wonderful works of art that they carry with them. They cannot by their own will create a design on their bodies that will perfectly imitate the environment they live in. Such a wonderful artistry and strategy of camouflage to protect creatures' lives cannot have come about by chance. There is no doubt that it is Allah, Lord of all the worlds, who created these living things from nothing and placed this wonderful decoration on their bodies to allow them to survive. Allah encompasses everything and every creature in the heavens and on the earth. In a verse of the Quran, Allah says, And in your creation and all the creatures he has spread about, there are signs for people with certainty. <laughs>